I have a turkey on my head. Happy Christmas. Hello. Hey guys, it is Wingy here and welcome to a brand new video. Now, I'm wearing this on my head because it is Christmas Day today, not because I'm some mental nutcase that has escaped from the asylum. Although that could also be true. Anyway, as it is Christmas, I thought I would look at some of the previous Doctor Who Christmas specials as today we are going to unfortunately be saying goodbye to Peter Capaldi and saying hello to Jodie Whittaker. But what I'm going to do today before that airs is I'm going to look at some of the best and worst Doctor Who Christmas specials that we have had over the years. Quick disclaimer though, I'm not going to be including the end of time in this video. Mostly because part one was broadcast on Christmas Day but part two wasn't so I don't really count that as a specific Christmas special episode. Maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. However, we do have other stories to talk about. Some I really quite like, some I think are underrated, some are overrated, some I just really dislike entirely. So without further ado, let's get into it. So I'm going to do this how I usually do my underrated and overrated series. So I'm going to go one bad, one good, one bad, one good. So if we're going to start off with the bad, then I'm going to go with the very first Christmas special that we ever had, which was the Christmas Invasion. Now some of you might disagree with me on this, and if you do, it's entirely fine. It's all opinion like the rest of this video. However, the reason why I put the Christmas Invasion on here is looking back at it now, it really wasn't the best way to introduce the 10th Doctor. For the majority of this episode, David Tennant is just asleep on a bed or when he's not, he's all weird and wacky, and then he goes back to bed again. It's not really until the very end that we actually get introduced to his Doctor. Now, for me personally, when this was first broadcast, I actually didn't see it. My first introduction to David Tennant was New Earth. However, I assume that given how his character is already comfortable with Rose, we would have got some decent scenes with those two already in The Christmas Invasion. So then I go back and watch The Christmas Invasion when the DVD finally comes out, and I realise he's not there at all. Plus, there's some really goofy stuff in this episode. I mean, I mean, the tree that attacks them is just ridiculous. The robot Santas are kind of alright, but I don't think they're utilised that well in this story. I think they work a lot better in The Runaway Bride. Like all Christmas specials, it just has to emphasise how Christmassy the episode actually is, and that kind of irritates me. I really wish that even though it is at Christmas time, we still got a decent episode that doesn't rely on it being Christmas. It's almost like they just drop the ball and then say, yeah, well, it's Christmas, people are going to be drunk and full of food anyway, so what's the point. Another main gripe of this story that I have is the Sycorax. Now, in terms of their design, they have got to be one of the coolest looking monsters that we have seen in the new series. The only issue is, they don't do a whole lot. And it's a shame that we've never actually seen them return. I know they have in Big Finish, but they haven't on screen, and I really wish they would. Properly, I mean. I know they've had cameos in other episodes before someone gets pedantic in the comments. Harriet Jones plays a really pivotal role in this story, and she's really, really good. It's just a shame that we don't see too much of her after this. In fact, I think it's Series 4 the next time we see her again. This episode episode has its moments, but it really kind of bores me. We don't get to see the new Doctor, and the monsters are wasted potential, so it's got to be one of the worst for me. Okay, so next we are going to be talking about a good story, one that I enjoy, and for me, my favourite ever Christmas special that we've had thus far has got to be Voyage of the Damned. This was a really interesting story to me. Now, the main gripe that I have with this story is the Titanic. They did this later on in Mummy and the Orient Express, but I really hate that we have to take something from our world and then turn it into a spacey thing. So obviously you had the train going through space on Mummy on the Orient Express and in this one we have the Titanic as an actual spaceship, not just the actual ship. The explanation in universe for why this is the case kind of makes sense, but at the same time I would have preferred to have seen the actual Titanic. Like I say, that is just a nitpick, but I am someone who's quite fascinated with the Titanic disaster and for me I really was excited to see it in Doctor Who, but they just didn't really do it. Also you could argue that Kylie Minogue isn't that great in this story, but because she's not really a proper actress, she's more of a pop star, even though she has acted before, she's fine, I'll give her a pass. But this story is like a proper disaster movie. I remember watching this when it came out and thinking that Doctor Who must have pumped its budget up, and I think one of the best things about this story is that you are introduced to all these different characters on the ship, and you genuinely don't know which one is going to survive. There are so many different cool and big moments, and I love that reveal at the end that Max Capricorn is just some 
dickhead head. He's a head on wheels. And I know that I mentioned before the majority of the Christmas specials have had some sort of Christmas theme in them. In this, it's not as prominent and I think that's why I like it as much as I do. Banner Cafalata is annoying but I like him. And the rest of the cast do really well and it's also the first time that we see Wilf and you can't really go wrong with a bit of Bernard Cribbins. I always have fun with this story. It's always been one of my favourite ones to re-watch around Christmas time. Okay, so next we're going to go to another crap story in my opinion and this one is Last Christmas. Christmas. The first Christmas special, I believe, with Peter Capaldi. Alright, first full Christmas special, because I know he was at the end of Time of the Doctor. Now, the reason why I think this is crap is because it tries to mimic Alien, but it does it in a really crappy way. The actual designs of the face huggers, or whatever they're called, are pretty cool, but they just don't do that much with them. It's like an Inception type story as well. It's like we're in a dream of a dream in a dream of a dream and Santa's here for some reason. It's really annoying because you manage to get someone like Nick Frost in an episode of Doctor Who and that's how you use him. Although to be fair a lot of the main big sort of comic actors that we've had in Doctor Who over the years have very rarely had a big or decent part in Doctor Who. The only exception that I can think of off the top of my head Catherine Tate. But credit to this episode in terms of the alien stuff it does actually make a reference to it in a really stupid comment though where the Doctor says oh you've got a film called Alien that's racist no wonder they keep invading you. How does the Doctor not know about Alien? Like let's really think about this for a second he should. Anyway this episode episode also has a subplot about Clara and Danny Pink because that's exactly what we needed more of after series 8. It's just a story arc that doesn't work. It didn't work in series 8 and dragging it out longer than you have to in this story really doesn't help the episode. The fact that Clara's in this as well, that just doesn't make sense. I've said this in another video but if Clara had left at the end of Death in Heaven in the way that she exited the TARDIS there, I would have been fine. She left the TARDIS in a perfectly good way. The Doctor and her both knew that they they weren't good for each other yet for some reason she's brought back it's not even the worst of it either at the end she's an old woman and yeah it's a heartfelt moment but then the doctor drags her back into the TARDIS and then we get more shit of Clara throughout series 9 I think this episode thinks it's a lot more clever than what it actually is and a lot of the characters in this story are incredibly annoying I can't remember her name I think it was Shauna the blonde but I think you know who I mean she was incredibly annoying and grating throughout this episode I remember watching it and I nearly fell asleep as it was on and next I'm going to talk about a Christmas episode that might surprise you. So for my second good story that we've had at Christmas, I'm actually going to go with Time of the Doctor. Now some of you might be wondering why, because I know it's kind of... Uh, well, it's not a popular story, but I quite like it. Now, don't get me wrong, it isn't perfect. There's a lot of shit thrown at the screen, and I don't think all of it sticks. But, at the same time, I think this has some of Matt Smith's best work as the Doctor. He really does carry this episode, and he does it with such charm and charisma that I just really was not wanting to see him go at the end. There's also quite a few resolutions for things that were set up from the beginning of Stephen Moffat's era. Now, some of them, I think, were resolved in a good way. Some of them, not so much. So we have the Daleks and Cybermen and Weeping Angels and a load of different people attack this planet of Trenzalore which we already know is the Doctor's final resting place but we don't know why they're attacking it. But it turns out it's something to do with Gallifrey. Now I don't know if that's 100% right but that's what I remember from that episode. So basically the crack in the wall it shows up again and it's revealed that that crack in the wall that we saw way back in the 11th hour is actually a way to speak to Gallifrey. I like that resolution. Who the silence actually were I don't think was resolved properly. The wooden Cyberman is a bit ridiculous. The Sontarans are all like Strax, which pisses me off to no end. But it's one of those stories, it's a guilty pleasure one, where I know a lot of it isn't great, I know a lot of it doesn't particularly make sense, but it's enjoyable. But going back to Matt Smith and what I said before, I think the explanation of him being the 12th incarnation of the Doctor, so, or is it the 13th? Either way, he's the last natural version of the Doctor, and this Doctor is not going to regenerate. I thought they handled it really well, and I think how Matt Smith acts when he's an older man as well, is brilliant. I don't think there's many doctors that could have done that and pulled it off in the same way that Matt Smith did. That scene where Clara's there holding his hand and reading in that story, it's just so beautiful. And I love the fact that the doctor keeps saying Barnable, he keeps getting confused in his old age. It's such a sweet touch. Now, in terms of the actual regeneration for the 11th Doctor himself, I remember thinking it was a bit of a catch-22. Because on the one hand, I don't want to see Matt Smith regenerate as an old man, especially when he's there waving his arms around and his last words 
words would have been love from Gallifrey boys or whatever it is he says I can't really remember that would have been really bad but at the same time I think it would have been a lot more effective and a lot more shocking for us as the viewer if when Clara goes back into the TARDIS Peter Capaldi stood there the reason why I think it's perfect the way that it is is because of that last scene where the 11th Doctor he's back in the TARDIS he's all young again now the explanation isn't perfect he's saying this is just the reset I'm still gonna change though I mean I can kind of buy it but we already saw all that regeneration energy so I don't really know about that either way we get this scene and it is absolutely beautiful Matt plays this perfectly now don't get me wrong I really like the 11th Doctor but he is by no means my favorite however I always shed a tear when I watch that scene it's just he hits every note and beat perfectly and I love the way that it goes against the end of time where in that episode it was all like oh I don't want to go and it's the whole thing of a new man swans off in my clothes whereas in Matt's regeneration scene it's almost like Stephen Moffat saw what Russell did and thought no this is actually what it is where he's saying stuff like we all change just remember who you used to be and I thought that that was brilliant that's a perfect way to sum up regeneration now some people like this some people don't I personally really enjoy the Karen Gillan cameo it was effective and it works perfectly for the 11th Doctor I always have a soft spot for it so I'm gonna have to put it in the video and mention it as one of my favorites but what do I know they're just some of my opinion guys let me know what you think of any of the Doctor Who Christmas specials in the comments below whether you love them hate them whatever which is your favorite which is your least favorite hopefully twice upon a time is gonna be good I can't see it though and just to let people know I said this in my video yesterday the review for twice upon a time will be up on the 27th anyway if you enjoyed this video guys make sure you leave a like on it subscribe share it around all the good stuff you know what to do and if you do any of it i would love you forever but until next time guys you take care of yourselves hope you've had a good christmas goodbye I'll tell you what though, I can rock this turkey. I I look good right now. I've never been more attractive. I've just realized I'm officially stuffing now that I'm wearing this.